This rule change has changed the sport of hockey forever. And will it come in effect in the NHL? We'll discuss this and much more coming up on this episode of Hattrick HQ. Hi, I'm your host, Casey, joined by my co-host, Mark, and welcome back to Hattrick HQ. First off, we just want to thank all you guys uh, for getting us to 100 subscribers. That was our goal for uh, when we started this channel to get to the beginning of the season, and you guys smashed it out of the park already. So we're going to set our new goal here at 250, and we just want to thank you guys for showing your love and support because we love pumping this content out for you guys, and we're glad that you guys are enjoying it. So with that said, we're going to get right into the first topic of this video, which is this rule has changed, uh, has altered the sport forever. And of course, we're talking about this morning in an article released by The Athletic, the Quebec Major Junior League or the QMJHL has officially banned fighting beginning with the upcoming season. Uh, and they go on to say the league rules state anyone engaged in a fight will be ejected from the game. And they also go on to say that uh, any player found to have instigated the fight will get an automatic one game suspension. The player declared the aggressor, aggressor during the fight will receive a minimum two game automatic suspension. Players involved in multiple scuffles in a season will start receiving an automatic suspension beginning with their second fight in addition to other sanctions. They also go on to say in this article that you know, uh, fighting has been around in hockey for a long time. It's been a, in the sport since it was created or founded uh, way back in the 1900s. But recently, in recent years or in, around in the 80s and 90s, it started to pick up a lot with, you know, the Broad Street Bullies, all those type of teams. And uh, they say, like, with right now, with the rule being a five-minute major, it is kind of nothing. You know, people are just fighting at will and, and, you know, picking up for their teammates or, you know, whatever. Uh, but... They go also go on to say that uh, other junior leagues may follow suit, like the NCAA, the Western Hockey League, uh, also the Ontario Hockey League. But they also say that the AHL and ECHL uh, will still be a training ground for young enforcers who want to make their way in, in, into the league uh, doing that kind of stuff. But uh, they say removing fighting from the juniors will just be another step in the inevitable eradication of fighting from the game at large. Mark, this this news kind of shocked me this morning when it released. Uh, I'd like just like to get your thoughts on, on what happened or on what happened and uh, like what you think about fighting potentially being removed from the game altogether. Uh, with the junior leagues, they've kind of been talking about it for a bit, removing fighting. I think they're more just thinking about players' safety and maybe they wanted to just kind of focus more on talent, but. The biggest issue I have with this is you're going to have these younger guys. A couple of guys are paving their way into the league by being, you know, a bigger guy, enforcers, stuff like that. And when they finally do make this jump, it kind of worries me that a guy going into the AHL, the ECHL, or hopefully the NHL for a lot of these guys, uh, they're not going to be ready for situations like this. You might see them get challenged to a fight. They might lay a hit that, you know, a fight happens, and it almost scares me to think that they're going to go into this against a guy that's experienced with it and not really know how to handle themselves. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, I think, you know, these young players, uh, some of them, like you said, are, are have made their way into professional hockey being enforcers. I don't think we're going to see the players take it that seriously right away, but uh, once they start, you know, getting – like so many like 10 game suspensions or however many it, it may be like by saying right in this article that the aggressor will get a two game minimum that uh, that's a steep uh, a steep penalty to take especially you know in the playoffs memorial cup time you know you're trying to rally your team back if you're down it, it's going to be interesting to see what unfolds here in the qmjhl no i completely agree yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely, you know, when you're talking about player safety, it's a big thing, you know, a lot of head injuries. You don't want to see these young guys coming out with concussions who haven't even played in the NHL yet. So it makes sense that they're removing fighting from the game, but I think it will always be a part of the game in some facet. Uh, but we're going to get right into the second topic, which is how will this affect the NHL? And uh, in this article, they go on to, to talk about why fighting is still condoned in the NHL. And they say, you know, it's a huge part of hockey as its identity. Uh, you know, the classic saying of I went to a fight and a hockey game broke out. But it's it's most it's in re in most recently available stats. Hockey fights, uh, uh, a site that tracks and logs every fight, said that there were 0.19 fights per game in the 2018-19 season, down from 0.6 uh, fights per game just 10 years earlier. They also say. Uh, 
NHL players, if fighting should be banned, they'll tell you no uh, if you ask them. But uh, the players, uh, police themselves uh, via fisticuffs, they'll tell you that if fighting were banned, then players would resort to cheap shots, dirty hits, settle to settle any scores. Uh, archaic as it is, as it seems, the sim the simple act of dropping the gloves and accepting a fight typically ends a dispute. And uh, they also go on to say here, as the league continues to target headhunters and tries to pre protect its players from brain injuries, allowing players to engage in bare knuckle boxing on the ice seems awfully counterintuitive. But while it might not make sense to most of us, it makes sense to the players. So for now, uh, it's not going anywhere. So, Mark, what do you think about, you know, obviously it's going into the junior league. Uh, I think, you know, players coming into the league now, uh, you know, aren't going to have that side to the game anymore. How do you think this will uh, f affect NHL in, in the coming years? I think with a lot of players coming into the junior leagues, you're going to probably see fighting drop a tiny bit in the NHL. As I said, you're going to see a lot of guys come up that maybe haven't fought before. They don't really know how to get involved in that. So you might see the numbers drop a tiny bit, but I personally don't think the NHL is going to get rid of it. It's one of those situations you see, like I said, a lot of enforcers are getting pushed out of the game. The Leafs had guys like Colton Orr and Fraser McLaren kind of anchoring that fourth line for him, and that role's kind of gone with the league being faster and needs more scoring and pace like that. But it's, like I said, medical, cheap shots, stuff like that. Like, you can't really have your star players getting killed on the boards and stuff like that and not being able to retaliate. So it's one of those situations where it's hard to kind of say, would you rather protect the players over fighting or would you rather protect the players where guys aren't going to be able to just run you and get away with situations like that? Yeah, you definitely make a good point there. Uh, you know, with players like Tom Wilson and those type of players still in the league, uh, you know, it, the league's never going to get away from it, I don't think. Uh, if they if they put this rule in, I think it, hockey fans, NHL fans will, will just go up in arms over it, I believe, because it is a part of the game. Uh, as of recent years, we haven't seen that many fights, uh, but, you know, it is a part of the game where, you know, if, you know, like you said, if, if you like dump somebody like the play that comes to mind for me is when Mark Shifley dumped Jake Evans there a couple of years ago in the playoffs and, and the team retaliated. If there was no fighting at, during that time, like that's just a guy who's getting a concussion out for the rest of the playoffs and, and nothing haps, happens to him, only like a four game suspension. But you know, it, it's kind of crazy to me to think that about this and fighting potentially banned from the NHL. But my main takeaway from this is that, you know, you got young 16 to 18 year old players now in the QMJHL that, you know, when they eventually work their way up to the NHL, they're not going to have any fighting skill. And like you said, if they run up against a, a Tom Wilson or, a, you know, a player of that style, they're just going to get flattened. So there's got to be there's got to be a way for players to practice fighting. If it's not at the QMJ level, they got to send the players. They can't come right into the league anymore. They got to go down in the AHL. They got to get in a scrap before they come up here. Because when they go up against a, a six foot three, 260 pound guy, and he's just wailing on you, it's just, it's just going to look bad and, and they're going to get injured. And you don't want to see any player get injured, especially a young star in the league. So it's just, it's just crazy to me that we're even talking about this because, you know, when you're watching a game and a fight breaks out, obviously as a fan, it is, it's probably the most hype part of the game. And, you know, if it's taken out and, and we're just seeing people get killed and killed and killed, it's, it's all going to build up and a big old line brawl is going to break out. And, and that's just what's going to happen because if you're not going to allow players to fight, then when, you know, something happens and someone gets put out with a season ending surgery, just getting hit along the boards or whatever it may be, you know, it's, it's just frustrating for the players. And obviously yeah, and when you look at a player safety side, it, it is a big aspect to like they're trying to eliminate the concussions, the brain injuries and all that stuff. But it's going to be hard to do, uh, you know, if, you know, even if you're only getting a two game suspension, if you're the aggressor, I, I don't think that the NHL will take that into its rulings or anything, unless it starts to become a really big problem like it was in the past. Yeah, no, I agree. Because, like, even with the fighting thing, it's not even just for hits and stuff. You see a lot of guys kind of come out and they might challenge someone to a fight and fight someone, just to get the momentum kind of rolling for the team. It's one of those things where, like I said, it's a really hard topic because you don't want to see people hurt. But 
it's such a big atmosphere change just for the players, the team, the media can talk about it, everything like this. And it's almost something that feels like if you remove fighting from the NHL, it just removes a part of the game and kind of strays away from what everyone grew up to. Before. Yeah, I agree. You know, if like you said, if they take fighting away, they kind of go away from their roots. I know. And, and like, as we've seen in this article, like there's only 0.16 fights per game. Uh, so, you know, that's with that kind of stat, it'd be different if it was like over 0.5, you know, like a, a, like a fight every two games is, you know, that, that kind of is a big issue, especially, you know, people like who've gotten fights have like breaking their hands, breaking their jaws, whatever. But hockey players are tough. They always come back the next game, whether it be with a full cage on or whatever. But I like to hear your guys thoughts on this down in the comments below. What do you think about this QMJHL ruling? Because it really took me by surprise. Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Do you think uh, the NHL should have follow suit with this and take this in in the next couple of years we really like to hear what you guys think and also uh 98 percent of you guys aren't subscribed so if you enjoy this type of content you enjoy watching hockey videos make sure to hit that subscribe button down below we enjoy like we said earlier in this video we enjoy pumping out this content for you uh we're big hockey buffs and i know you guys are we like hearing your comments whether it's criticizing us or whether it's agreeing with us so make sure to comment down below what's your thoughts on, on banning fighting from nhlr and for mark pie i've been casey keep your stick on the ice